award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. in my home country of Africa, in my tribe of Boogie. Improvisation, it's one of the core skills of acting. Miles. And recently, acting students at Germantown High learned how to live in the moment during a week-long improv workshop with LA-based sketch comedy group Cake Batter. Also, don't worry about speed right now. While the Cake Batter group was new to most students, this was the second year the group has partnered with GHS. It's so cool to see how much they've grown. They all have such strong personalities and some of them are so fearless. I think the confidence that I've built from year to year to year doing this consecutively um, has taught me that there doesn't need to be a fear. It helps me learn to stop thinking about what I'm doing and what I'm saying and to just do what my gut tells me to do. While theater students practice improv and sketch comedy, there's another workshop happening at the same time. Over here in the Germantown High School television studio, another alum is teaching students about professional film work and on-screen acting. During this week-long workshop, students wrote, acted, directed, and edited short films. It feels like we're on an actual film set because we're working with professional uh, assistant director and a professional steady cam. Workshops really allowed me to try new things such as the steady cam and that's really allowed me to expand my horizons. For some students, the workshops meant stepping outside of their comfort zones. It's really been uh, fun for me because um, I'm able to really express myself in a different way instead of like behind the camera. On stage, I feel like there's room to explore. On camera, I have to really watch my blocking because the camera is following me. By the end of the week, Germantown High students learned that taking chances are worth the risks. Just get out there and do it, and whatever you do, you do, and you do it your best. I can't believe Cindy embarrassed me in front of the entire school again! <sighs> If I get one more swirly, I'm gonna kill that quarterback. <laughs> Welcome back, team. What's happening, Captain? Took you guys long enough. I've leveled up twice already. My apologies. I nearly drowned today, and it caused me to miss my bus. Whoa! Are you okay, Captain? Of course. No athletes can halt me, but Magician, you arrived the same time as I. Cheerleaders talk down to me one more time, I'll whip out my sword and I'll chop them into pyramids. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I can talk to you guys. You always understand me, and you can play this awesome game. Oh, by the way, what the heck is that, assassin? Don't worry, guys, we got this. Of course. All right, magician, you at the front, assassin at the rear. Got, got it! What? Wait, watch the feet! Ah! Don't worry, your captain has this. Watch ah! the feet! Huh. Crap! Ah! Oh. Assassin? Magician? Captain? Yes! Are you... are you sure? Yes, it is I. Wow, oh, I can't believe we're all here and you all are real. I, I, I always thought it was just a game. Oh, well, thank God it's not. Well, let's do it again, guys, come on. Yeah! Oh, Crap! Oh, ha. I'm Rex, the T-Rex. This is my cave. Let's have a look around. 
Over here is my fireplace. Hanging above is my family photo. Family! Now, my family wasn't a really nice one. My mama and papa took me out for a hump one day. And they showed me how... That's just my shadow. <laughs> and I've watched them take down that huge long neck down. And ever since then, I became a vegan. Now that's just a fancy word for my family. Jason, you never want to see me again. <laughs> they, my mama and papa kicked me out. And I went out and found my own cave. Now I do my own cooking. Last night, I had rice and tofu. Mmm, it was good. <laughs> Damn rats! Now I feel like my own protector, and I have to practice my own raw. Change of scenery, finally away from my husband, Larry. <laughs> it's hot in here. Oh, dang it, that voice sounds familiar. Larry? Nora? What, what are you doing, doing here? here? I was the nice man with the devil horns escorting me in. He even gave me a postcard that says, Welcome to hell. Well, did you talk about politics, too? I mean, how did you get here? I mean, when I poisoned your oatmeal, I was supposed to get away from you. Well, I... Wait, you're poisoning my who? Nothing, I said nothing. Well, turn the AC on. It's really hot down here. Larry, how did you even get down here? Well, remember those trips to Paris and Tokyo that I took I, I, on? I remember Tokyo. I need you all my help. Oh. Well, <laughs> I cheated in bingo to get that money. Oh, well, that's not all that bad. Oh, wait, there's more. I took money from my grandkids' college tuition to buy the lifetime supply oatmeal, the kind we both like. I'm sorry, Nora. It was good oatmeal. Oh, it's okay. I forgive you. Oh, I forgive you too, Nora. <laughs> but look on the hot side of it. We're down here. We can do whatever we want. We can rob banks. Oh, I can eat all the calories I want. Gluttony. I can lie to my wife. What? I don't know. <laughs> hey, let's go smash some cars like the young things do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my heart. Oh, I love that. Are oh, you in here? You belong up here with me and the other angels. Rise up. Oh, I guess all the Bible lessons paid off. Well, I told you to get up in the morning. Doing improv with kids is so much fun um, because while there's a little bit of that, there's still eager to do it, eager to learn, and like kind of don't care what other people think of them. The improv workshop has been a ton of fun. We've learned so much information on how to quickly do a sketch and like the points you need to hit while doing an improv skit. I've learned so many new things about acting and about learning how to not think but just do. It's a way to act without a story that is already there. You create the story. Having the freedom to create my own scene and having to think of a scene on the spot instead of just reading a script, you know, it's really, really cool. I like to describe it as if you've ever gone surfing. It's like you try and try and try and you know that it's going to come and you know that you're going to catch that wave and the minute you catch that wave, that feeling of sort of like free falling or like excitement that it's happening, it's happening, and then you fall down. But then the minute you get back up, you're like, I want to feel that feeling again. That's why improv is so much fun, because you just kind of keep coming back for more, and you don't know when that magic spark's going to happen again. Dinner's ready. Come on, T. Come on, T. Get in line. Hurry it up. Let's go. We have a dinner to eat. OK, huddle up, huddle up. Here's the game plan. We eat peas, then rice, then noodles. Lindsay, don't forget those veggies. When my team won the state championships in basketball, it changed my life forever. Lindsay, I swear to god, if you do not eat those vegetables, Honey, go get the kids some water. They are making a mess out there. When I hit that three-pointer the last five seconds of the state championship, my life was changed forever. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, if you do not eat those, those vegetables, I will put you on the bench as fast as I can. Honey, get the kids some towels. They are making a mess out there. 
crap. Crap, Dancing with the Stars comes on in one minute, and I am not forfeiting this game. Come on, see, we're in the last home stretch. Eat your veggies, eat your meatloaf. Dancing is a sport. You sure not throb that poor woman. Have fun riding together. Lauren and I come from training at Second City, which teaches you improvisation into sketch comedy. And sketch comedy is written short form sketches. We do a bunch of different things. We um, always started off the day doing games, warming up, playing different improv games where you come up with things on the spot. And then we'll break down and dissect um, everybody's skit. Um, we're all in a three or four person skit or you're in a single monologue and you work on that and perfect it with um, Aaron and Lauren. What we've been doing with the kids is we've been practicing for two or three days on basic improv scenes will find what's funny in that scene, whether it be a situation, um, a character, something someone says, a funny habit that a character embodies, and we'll take that and we'll teach them how to write a scene. It's usually you and one other person. So you lead that person on and you and that person take that scene in wherever you want to take it. I just go on spot and I do exactly what my mind tells me to do. Each of these scenes is based off an improv game or exercise that we've taught these kids and they've gone home and they've taken a character that they like or a situation and they've built a whole scenario and they've cast their characters, they've done edits and rewrites and what you see on stage at the show is the final product of all of those improv exercises. Look at all my little sleeping angel students. They're so cute, I just want to fix your cheeks. <coughs> One of these days, I'm gonna pinch her cheeks right off. <laughs> Stefano, baby face, mm. wake up. Uh, what is it, boss? Yeah, I was enjoying my nap. Well, forget about it, cause I'm the Don. I'm in charge, and real mobsters don't take naps. Plus, I'm older. Yeah, well, if I wanna be a mobster. What? You know what Dad would say if he heard you say that? He'd take you for a ride, and you'd never come back. Never? Never. And our brother runs the third grade, and you want to disrespect the family business? You know what Dad always says, start him young, start him strong. Yeah, especially the day of the big deal. What big deal? Oh, you're killing me, baby face. You're killing me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Donna. It's done. Sorry. Look, I got a nice rundown on hot things. <clears throat> 
Uh, now that's what I like to see. Baby face. <laughs> well, I hustled little Johnny of his action figures, and then they got stuck up my nose again and the teacher took them. <laughs> you guys hear that? What? It's the feds! Link book! <laughs> I thought I heard something. <laughs> it's like it's almost snack time. What you got? Ah, Donna. It's Don. Sorry. I got animal crackers. <laughs> well, you know, I took little Rinmi and got his fruit roll ups. And I got hungry. <laughs> if I don't see something right now, both of yours is gonna get locked up in the closet at home tonight. Oh, kids. Closet, closet. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the dark. <laughs> well, Babyface is the one who put the stash in the cubby this morning. Is that right, Babyface? You little rat. I'm you. a little rat. No, Daddy, oh, it wasn't no. Cabin Kelly. He would give me the whack. Uh -huh. Amadeus Wolfgang, Xmas Jackson Flax and Waxen, of Kingle McCringleberry, Bradley Ahab Elizabeth Mozart, Bradley Everhart the Third. <laughs> but to them, it's just generic old. Fido! Don't let him fool you, though. This is my castle. Marked it myself, can't you smell? <laughs> and all these little peons belong to me. You see, I'm the only one with good sense around here, and it's my job as a certified homo sapien whisperer to keep these little monkeys in place and train them when they think they're training me. Exhibit A. Monique doesn't care about anyone but herself. You stupid dog. You'd be better off as a rug. Yes, bless Woo! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Isn't she a darling? <laughs> this one here, this is Uncle Ruckus. He says I'm the golden child, which makes sense because my IQ is higher than both of the other kids combined. <laughs> he truly is my favorite puppet. Watch this, I'm gonna make it run my belly. Yes. Yes. Annoying. Yes. Aw, good Fido. Amadeus. See, why can't you kids be more like Fido? He has a brighter future than both of you. Whatever. You know you still haven't passed me the remote yet? Oh, well, it's time for you to learn from the You said you were going to give me my game. It comes out tomorrow. What's up? <laughs> I will beat you, but I'm not your daddy. But I will slap you like a slingshot. Sure, <laughs> but you can't beat me in my game. Oh, oh yeah. you really wish I could. Ah, uh, the last pawn in my little game of chess. Little Thomas, or as he is called in his little idol there, the Lord of Dark Arts. <laughs> you see, he's so absorbed in that little game that he doesn't notice anything else in the real world. Well, let me try something. Yes, 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 oh, yes, yes, yeah, woo, yes. Just as I thought. <laughs> well, this is my family. See how big and happy it is. Oh my Fire! God. You're blocking Whoa. my view. Are you serious? Come on. Talking about garbage like that? Excuse me? Yes. That garbage. Yes. 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 Uncle Rookie. Oh my God. Walking hip hop and hip hop is not garbage. It's my life. Oh my God. I'm thinking of you. I need a cigarette. 
I can't let this family fall apart. Looks like it's time for Fido the Wonder Dog to save the day again. Let's start with little Tommy in the well. Game over. Fido! That's my game! Give that back! Fido, what's your problem? And this is the part where Fido plays dead. <coughs> good guardian lately. Ever since your parents died in that seagull accident, I haven't been the same. But I do love you little trash bags. We love you too, Uncle Ruckus. Tastes <coughs> <coughs> like a sappy ending. Fido! The kids we're working with this week have blown me away. They take it seriously, you can see the intention in their eyes, their focus. Um, I've been really impressed with what they've showed up with each day after we teach them four or five different new skills the day before and they come back in with a written sketch and it's there. Oh, one of the sketches me and my friend wrote, we, uh, <laughs> it's actually really funny. We created a scene where we are two old married couples in the underworld. A sketch that I personally like uh, thought of and wrote is called Gamers, where um, it's a group of three uh, game pe people that play a game, and they're students, and they they've never met anyone before, and they're they're scared of real life. I got a single monologue. There are three single monologues, and I get to play um, a coach mom, a mom that is a basketball coach but has a problem, kind of figuring out when she's at home and when she's at work. So it's pretty funny. It was kind of difficult because you have to think of a who, what and a why. Uh, and so the why part was the hardest because you have to figure out how to make sure that you have a purpose in your skit. And it's not just something that's just supposed to be funny. It has to build up to be funny. It's really cool to see them um, when Lauren and I will give examples or get up there and kind of perform for them. The way that they light up, you can really tell that they care about what they're learning. They're, they're extremely eager to learn, which I love. Um, we were here last year as well, and so we have some of the same students, and it's so cool to see how much they've grown. I feel like with the improv group, there was gonna be something there that I knew that I needed to experience, I needed to learn, I needed to feel, because I wasn't gonna get that if I didn't take the chance. She was gonna be so old. I'm only 25. <laughs> and did your mom tell you you're supposed to have like two eyebrows? No. <laughs> well, my name is Becky. I'm a third year Girl Scout, and I'm in charge of the arts and crafts. And I'm Alexis. You can totally call me Lexi. I'm a third year Scout, and I'm in charge. <gasps> I'm uh, I'm Celeste. Been out of college three years, and I'm in charge of the stray dogs outside of my apartment. College? Yeah, where uh, where dreams go to die. <laughs> I majored in philosophy and art history, and it's like totally going nowhere. Art? We only take art once a week. I didn't know you could do that for a job. You can't. <laughs> I thought I could, but like, you can't, and all my friends have jobs. So I figured I'd come here and like try to make friends. What? Look at the bra strap. Oh, oh my gosh, my mom doesn't let me wear a bra. You're like <laughs> super restricting, guys. Whoa! Is that a purse? A purse! Look at all the pockets! I can't believe your mom lets you. 
do you have a purse? What else am I like supposed to put my Taco Bell wrappers in? A <laughs> uh, fanny pack? Duh! That's what all the fifth graders wear. Of course. <laughs> so, Becky, do you think she has any merit badges? Uh, not unless you can like get one for not having a boyfriend. <gasps> I have three boyfriends. I have one. Your pillow doesn't count! Yes, he does! Wait. No. Your boyfriend's having, like, older brothers? <laughs> Silence! I am your substitute! He who hunts the lions. Today, we learn about biology. I know a lot about biology. See, when a man loves a lion, they make a baby. Half man, half lion, all amazing. <laughs> but first, we take the road. Jonathan! What do you mean Jonathan isn't here? He has the audacity not to show up. Back in my home country of Africa, in my tribe of Bougainville. <laughs> we would walk 200 miles each day for a drop of goat milk. And Jonathan has the audacity to not show up to my class. This is despicable. Wow! I told you it's not dressed up, it's live action role playing. Stop interrupting me! <laughs> I've been very impressed with the kids of Germantown High School. Um, first of all, they're very polite. <laughs> I'm from Chicago and I live in LA and I've been called ma'am all week and I think that is the best thing ever. Aaron and Lauren are very um, supportive people. They are very creative as well. They are hilarious, they are funny, and they come at situations in teaching in a very humorous manner. Being students, we don't always know what we want, and working with them, they've kind of put the ideas in my head, which I was thinking of, but couldn't form it into words. I never thought I'd be teaching this. I guess that means I, you know, I, I think I feel way more capable than I even thought. And what we're trying to teach these kids this week is to not think about trying to be funny, but just do what, add to what's next, and something will appear Erin, she gives more concept about, you know, um, what not and what to do and not to do in improv, such as don't say no or keep the scene going or always answer with yes and and just um, don't argue with your partner, don't fight, just to keep the scene going and uh, to keep the audience engaged. I would say Lauren is more um, kind of outspoken and funny and just says things on the spot. It feels very natural um, because when you take the time to, to learn a craft, um, all you want to do is share it. And it's really easy when you have a group of kids that are, pay attention and listen and, and are passionate about the same thing. They're really um, experienced. They, they can tell you what you need to hear to better yourself. And that's really helpful in improv. They help us bring out the creativity that we have because they know that we have potential and they can actually get that out of us by putting us in these games and putting us in these situations where we actually have to show our creativity and then they guide us from there. Frame up camera two. Let's clear these cables. Everyone put your phones away now. We are Who picked out this suit? We go oh, live oh, in five minutes. Where's, makeup? Where's right makeup? makeup? Everyone put your phones away. Brand How do I pronounce this girl's name? Is it Eunice? Eunice in camera three. Remember, we're in Eunice. Eunice? We are here representing the school. Let's make them proud. Where's Carmen? I haven't seen her all day. Okay, that's. Man, I would wish you luck on this trivia stuff, but you're a freak at it. Ah, thanks, man. <laughs> Hi, I'm new here, and I'm a little confused. Can you help me find the auditorium? Uh, first of all, you're backstage. Uh, and secondly, don't worry about it. It's gonna be your door to the right. You'll find your way. Uh, thanks. No problem. Hey, look at me. What was it? I don't know, man. I just... <laughs> Just looked at her and, and 
nothing came out. She mesmerized you that much? I guess so. <laughs> well, I gotta get back on. I gotta get back to my seat. I'll see you later. I'll right, see you, man. Luck, man. I'll see you. All right. All right, kids, settle down, settle down. Get, get your little nasties. I may be old, but I know when I can spot some foolish things. Thank you, thank you. Hello, and welcome to our ac academic quiz tournament. My name is Jeffrey French. And up next, I'll be introducing three different teenagers that placed highest on their academic test scores. First up, we have Eunice Powers. Eunice is on the debate team. She's a member of the Academic Decathlon, the Latin Club, the International Club, the Future Leaders of Tomorrow, and the President of the Overachievers Club. Now up next, we have Carmen Brady. Oh, okay, well, seems that Carmen will be out of town for the next nine months. <laughs> oh my God. And moving right along, our final contestant has won this tournament three years in a row now. Please welcome Eric. Yeah. 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 Eric is the captain of the lacrosse team and a member of the National Honor Society. Now, let's get started. Start, please. Uh, of course. Let's start. First question. Name this desert beyond the Sahel that stretches across Africa. Eric? Easy. That's... Oh, that's... Eric, you have five seconds. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's... It's... Time's up. Eunice? Easy. Sahara Desert. Correct. Five points. Next question. Leto was the mother of this sun god, and his twin sister was Artemis. Eunice? Ares? Incorrect. Eric, you can steal? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's... I, I... I, I, I think it's, I, I think, I, I think I, I, I can't do this anymore. Oh, that was unexpected. Congratulations, Eunice. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm fine. Well, it was Apollo, by the way. You know, Leto was his mother and Artemis was his twin sister. Yeah, uh, you're right. <laughs> well, I'm kind of good at this quiz bowl stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna shoot two short films this week. Our films aren't going to, you know, uh, be in the next film festival, big film festival necessarily, but after having done the film, they'll have more knowledge. You know, let the students explore all the different positions on set and and just kind of get a taste for what it's like working um, with a professional camera with you know professional crew members such as Blake and myself. They give us a prompt to write a script and then once we've written the script they choose the best scripts and then we decide to shoot those and we shoot those for about one or two days and then we edit them and then we display them for everyone to see. Uh, we're working with a Steadicam operator and a, an actual Steadicam, uh, which is, you know, another wrinkle in the fold that we, we've never even touched. So when they go to NYU and stuff, they'll be like, I've worked with this camera before, I've seen a Steadicam, I know what I would use it for. It was a really different experience because usually I'm an actress and um, I never do the behind the scenes work. It's a five day program, so on day one we start with script writing, I give them specific prompts that they have to use, I give them some tips, I give them structured tips, they'll write the scripts, 
we'll go over all the scripts together, they'll go back, they'll make changes, and then we'll select two of the scripts that we think we can produce. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're the best scripts, it means that they're, they're, they're one of the best and they're most economical, and I know we can achieve it within the small amount of time we have. I really enjoyed directing. I'm an actor in each of the short films. Also on set, I was first assistant camera. We call it first AC. They try and give an equal opportunity to everybody to try any position they want to. This could launch their career. It also could just give them experience and help them hone in on exactly the craft they want to do. We have 13 students that we're working with, um, at sophomore through senior level. And it, as with any group of students, there's a variety of different personalities I can see, even just from the first day. Um, but what I can tell, they, they all seem very intelligent, very driven. When we met with Blake and Patrick, I was kind of intimidated because they knew so much, and I really don't know that much yet. But they really just try and give you the tools, and they teach you as much as they can. And hearing the experiences they've had, it just kind of really gives me like a lot of excitement about film in the future for myself. They don't have that chip on their shoulder that I felt that I had when I was in high school. So someone that gives me a note and I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, I know what to do. They're actually open to changes. They, they've been taking feedback very well. Um, they haven't been defensive about any of the, the things that they've been doing. They've been um, very receptive to our criticism. They're very attentive during the workshop, which is great. It was really cool to actually get the perspective of an actual assistant director in the real life out there to tell me how to do my job here in this, you know, minuscule high school workshop. And they have also helped me with like being an editor and being a AC. I didn't just direct, I helped Maggie, Maggie helped me. It really is a team effort and you have to communicate with everyone in every department, make sure everyone's on the same page. Then when everyone comes together and you get that final shot and you get that just gorgeous cinema shot, you know it's all worth it and it's so rewarding. This room is a complete disaster. Jake, mom and dad are gonna ground both of us. You have to clean this up understand how it got this messy. Let's not do this today. Let's not do this today. Yeah. Let's not do this today. Oh, you have the nerve. It's not that hard to clean up after yourself. I mean, you, there's like a bottle. What? What is this? It's like wrappers. You can just pick it up. It's not that hard. I promise. I keep been doing it all the time. It's not that hard. Blah, blah, blah. I can't do this alone. You gotta help me, man. Oh, you make me so mad. Okay. I can't do this today. I really can't. So can you please, please, just clean up after yourself. Like, what the hell is this even doing out here? Clean it up. Have a nice day. stuck in a rut? Are you constantly being nagged? Maybe being compared to a perfect sibling? Oh, the irony. Is the only reason you're watching this VHS is because it was thrown at you, Jake? Whoa. What? Jake, do you realize how long this room has been like this? Up. I can't do all of the work around here. Yeah, yeah. I'll get to it. You're impossible. I remember that day. Of course you do. But let's take a look at what exactly happened. Hey. Look what I found. As vintage as that is, I don't think Mom and Dad want us digging around their stuff. Oh, come on. It's not like this one VHS is going to make this room a pigsty. So much for keeping it clean. I mean, why does she even care? It's not like it matters if I keep around this stupid VHS. 
First of all, ouch. I'm not just a stupid VHS. And second of all, it may not matter to you, but I'm pretty sure Eliza wouldn't appreciate having this much on her plate. This isn't fair. Oh. That's not fair. I didn't just clean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the important thing is, is to have fun at your job. And there's so many different ways you can have fun when you're creating things. I think that's what's most important, is to keep making films with their friends or whoever. It sucks sometimes, but it's something that, if you love it, and you care about your craft, that you go through because in the end, you're working on projects that you care about. You're telling stories that you think should be told. Keep going with what you're good at. Um, never stop learning. Get your hands wet as much as you can. Get in there, try new things, get outside your comfort zone. You have to be willing to know yourself, know what types of projects you want to take on, know what types of roles you're comfortable playing. It's, it's difficult. You need to constantly be pushing yourself. Just do anything on any film and don't be, I'm a director, so this is what I'm doing. And keep making shorts and, and no one likes your shorts and, and you're never gonna, you know, branch out and do other things and then come back to what you want to do after you've gotten some recognition. It's not easy. And it's, there, there are a lot of times that I want to give up and I want to quit. Um, but it's, it's something that if you really care about it and you're really passionate about it, you have to just kind of dive in and go for it. Jeez. No, 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 I don't believe this. You lived with gorillas. Now what? 